Now, here's an idea. Put this on your list for the next school holidays. The small town of Eramanga, about a thousand k's west of Brisbane, is home to a new mo- museum showcasing Australia's little known dinosaurs and megafauna. It all started 12 years ago when a local teenager found an unusual bone on his family's cattle station. That led paleontologists to Australia's oldest known dinosaur. Known locally as Cooper, what a great name, it's a titanosaur. And 95 million years ago, it was one of the world's biggest. After a massive fundraising effort by the local community, the Eramanga Natural History Museum has just opened its doors. Cathy Van Extel was speaking with the uh, Operations and Collections Manager, Robin McKenzie. It began back in 2004, and uh, it really began quite by accident, like a lot of good things, I guess. It began by a 14-year-old boy, who happens to be our son, who discovered what he thought was an unusual-looking rock, and it turned out to be the very first dinosaur bone ever found in this area. It was a very special dinosaur bone, though, wasn't it? Well, as it turned out, it was very special because it then you know, led to the discovery of Australia's largest dinosaur. It actually, in fact, wasn't from the same site. But it was a catalyst, I guess, to sort of start looking. The site that Sandy found that first piece of bone at, we haven't really dug much at all yet. And it's a site that extends for about 90 metres. So there's still a lot of work to be done along with many other sites. The dinosaur that we were talking about there is, I think you've called him Cooper. And he is, what, 95 million years old, possibly? Yes. So Australia's largest dinosaur, in fact, the Science is actually just being done on that and the paper will be published later this year. Cooper is a titanosaur, um, the largest land-dwelling animal that ever walked on Earth. And Cooper is in the top 10 largest of those animals in the world. In size, he stretches about 30 metres long and, and height-wise about 6.5 metres high. So if you, anyone ever comes to visit the museum here, the workshop that we're operating out of at the moment is actually 30 metres long and 6.5 metres high. So if we all got out of there, we could probably stuff Cooper in there, but there wouldn't be much room for anything else. <laughs> I understand you've got quite a lot of other animals, though, in that warehouse. We have, we have. So there's many other dinosaurs, there are dinosaurs and more than just one dinosaur. So we've worked on a, only about three, four sites and there's well over eight dinosaurs that we have to work on at the moment and there's many more sites to work on. And even last year, the site we worked on, the proportions of the bones coming out of that were just amazing. So time will tell exactly how big that particular individual is. So um, where have these bones been kept prior to this museum opening? Prior to us moving in here, we were operating out of what we call the field station because it was based on our property, an hour west of Aramanga, on the same property where the dinosaurs were actually found. And that was a shed which we, as landholders, had actually built and I kind of took over for the fossil preparation lab and all the bones were stacked in pellet racking where the machinery would normally be, like all the trucks and tractors. They kind of, a lot of them had to go and sit out in the sun because the bones took priority. So so in the end, we had filled filled our sheds up with dinosaur bones and um, we'd actually completely outgrown it out there. But not only that, we had to move because... We can't describe new species on a private property. They have to be in a public space and available to be open to public science and to the public. So we had to be in this public facility before our paleontologists could start actually describing these bones. Many people would expect that the discovery of such important species and such ancient species would attract a huge amount of government support and interest but this has been pretty much a community led project from the start and and continues to be so. Yes Kathy it has I mean we were a little bit surprised ourselves because I guess you sort of all live in this world of fantasies with dinosaurs when you find you know you all dream a little bit about finding something that weird and we did and you just sort of think straight away that you'll get flocked with money and office to help and all the rest of it. Well, the office to help were there, but the money wasn't. So what we ended up having to do is set up um, our own Australian charity, basically. So the Outback on Wana was set up. It's the government for the running of the museum. It's a fundraising body. And through that, we've been able to generate enough income to keep operating and keep digging. It's been very tough. But we're fortunate that we live in a very resource-rich region in the Cooper Basin, and we've had some very generous resource companies Santos and Beach Energy and also IOR in an oil refinery, but they too have sort of 
hit tough times now. So that sort of sponsorship is particularly hard to keep as well. To give you some idea, this in the vicinity of a million dollars worth of in kind that this community, which is a tiny community, has put in to get to this stage. So you, you now have the museum, though, and that has come about through the support of government money. When people yes. visit Eremanga now, what can they expect? We were fortunate to get, with the help of Kulpishar Council, the um, Royalties for Regions money, which has basically built this workshop that we're in now. So now we are um, have made you know, three goddesses a day available to the public. So it'll just take people through the prehistoric story of this region and this large part of Australia, really. Some of Australia's largest asteroids actually impacted right on this area and right near these dinosaurs. Little is known by the public. This is only very new science. They landed in the Aramanga Sea, you know, the story of Aramanga dinosaurs and then the dinosaurs after they came is the megafauna. And I think one of the things that, if nothing else, we will hope to achieve with this museum at this early stage is to, you know, hopefully get lots of visitors who will be very excited about coming and seeing Australia's largest dinosaurs and they do happen to be new species as well and genus. But when they come, they'll also see these amazing megafauna fossils from these massive animals that actually existed after the dinosaurs. The ones we're working on are about 100,000 years old and they come from sites around Yulo and these sites are producing probably the most highly concentrated amount of bone and best preserved bone in Australia for these types of um, fossils. Now, there's already an established dinosaur trail in outback Queensland and Winton, of course, has Lark Quarry, which has the fossilised dinosaur stampede and it also has the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Natural History Museum. So where does Eremanga fit in with all of this? Outback Queensland is the epicentre for all these discoveries and we're really starting to pull this all together. You know, if you look at it as a whole, what Eremanga has, what Winton has, what Richmond has. They're further up north. They've got the marine reptiles. What we've got and what Winton have got, it. we've got totally different dinosaurs. They've got new to science dinosaurs. We've got new to science dinosaurs. We've got the megafauna down here as well. And then you go across to Riversley and you've got another different age of megafauna there as well. The doors have just opened, but how much interest have you had so far from travellers and from tour operators? We've got a lot of pre-bookings. Uh, we have bookings all over this weekend and then bookings next week and I expect it'll be slow to start with because it's it's something new and it'll, and these things take time to build. We're pretty excited, we're very keen and um, yeah, we just really would love everyone to come and visit and just see what we can show them. Fantastic, isn't it? Out back Queensland, Dinosaur Central, Robin McKenzie from the newly opened Aramanga Natural History Museum. I told you perfect for school holidays, lots of diverse dinosaur and megafauna remains on show. We'll put a link to that to our website, Kathy Van Extel, with that report.